Look, I like to rip apart nasty ingredients, xanthan gum, carrageenan, and rip apart food additives as much as the next guy. I like to find something to complain about with a given food product, but we have to make sure we're complaining about the right thing, okay? The hard part with the internet right now is that anyone with a computer can look something up and create a video and be an expert. And it frustrates me because it throws real science out the window. Real science is about challenging your hypothesis. Okay, so when you look at something like carrageenan, in the case of this video, I see so many videos out there talking about how carrageenan is bad, but they're talking about how it's bad for the wrong reasons because they're extrapolating what they want to extrapolate from just a couple of studies. I want to lay out just the truth about carrageenan, why it's kind of confusing, and why it really might be bad. So we'll break it all down. Remember, science is challenging your hypothesis and trying to prove yourself wrong. That's what I'm here to do, prove even myself wrong so that you can live a healthier lifestyle. Hey, I do wanna make sure that you hit that red subscribe button and then please do hit that bell icon. That way you can turn on all notifications and never miss our daily videos. And a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is a company called Life Seasons that has a really cool low carb digestive aid. So I highly recommend that you check it out. It's called Keto Digestivity. So there's a link down below so that you can check them out. They have a blend of different enzymes, a blend of different probiotics, and quite honestly, it's pretty interesting stuff what they've put together there. So I highly, highly recommend that you check it out. Big thank you to them. They're a big supporter and sponsor of this channel, and they make everything that you see in front of you possible. So big thank you to them, and please do check them out down below in the description if you're doing intermittent fasting or if you're following a low carb protocol or you're just focused on digestion. Okay, so here's the thing with carrageenan. Carrageenan is an indigestible polysaccharide that's derived from seaweed. It's not some crazy poison, okay, but it's used as a thickener and as a stabilizer. So it gels things up. So you see it in cottage cheese a lot. You'll see it in some yogurts. You'll see it in almond milks and stuff like that. But let's talk about where all the confusion comes in. Because most people, if you were to poll them, they would tell you that carrageenan is bad. But they're likely getting confused with something called polygenin. Now, you're probably thinking polygenin and carrageenan, those are two completely different names. Are you insulting my intelligence by telling me that you think that I'm confusing them. Well, not exactly, because here's the thing. Up until like 1988, 1990-ish, polygenin was called degraded carrageenan, because that's what it is. It's still carrageenan, it's just degraded in a chemical form down to something called polygenin. Carrageenan is a food additive. Polygenin isn't even safe for food consumption. It's not even used in that. It's used in like medical imaging. But people still get confused because of semantics, right? Degraded carrageenan versus carrageenan. So all the old research and all the research that's surrounding polygenin still gets roped in with carrageenan because it's called degraded carrageenan. So let's clear this all up and see which is bad for what. So carrageenan is what you would call a long polymer that has a high molecular weight. Okay, this means it gels up, but it doesn't really get absorbed. So it doesn't really affect your body. Whereas polygenin is so degraded and so broken down that it has a low molecular weight, okay? So that means that it could potentially have an effect on the body and could be toxic. So if we look at some of the stuff surrounding carrageenan being a carcinogen, stuff starts to make sense. A lot of what I see out there is people touting carrageenan as a huge carcinogen. But if you look at the science, and there was a study that took a look at 45 of the different animal studies and reviewed them, okay? All 45 of those studies were actually looking at degraded carrageenan. They were looking at polygenin. It's like they were looking at the wrong thing or they were looking at the right thing, but everyone out there in internet land is extrapolating what they wanna extrapolate out of it and they're ultimately saying that carrageenan is a carcinogen when it's polygenin that is a carcinogen. But that does beg the question, can carrageenan get broken down into degraded carrageenan within the human body? Well, there's a study that was published in Critical Reviews of Toxicology that found that carrageenan does not get degraded into polygenin in dogs, in rodents, and in non-human primates. Hmm. Okay, so we don't know entirely with humans, but we can say based upon this research that carrageenan doesn't really seem to be a carcinogen, but that doesn't totally mean that it's getting away scot-free. We have to talk about inflammation in the gut a little bit because that's where things really do matter. Let's first take a look at another animal study. Okay, this study was published in Food and Cosmetic Toxicology. Took a look at rhesus monkeys. Okay, and these rhesus monkeys, it gave them either uh, 0.5 to 2% polygenin into their diet or 1% to 3% carrageenan in their diet. 
Okay, the rhesus monkeys that had the smaller amount of polygenin ended up developing diarrhea, they developed ulcers, they developed some gut inflammation, and they even developed some hemorrhaging. Compare that to the rhesus monkeys that had a larger amount of food grade carrageenan, they had no symptoms, they had no change whatsoever. Okay, so polygenin, at least in rhesus monkeys, bad, carrageenan, somewhat neutral. However, when you look at carrageenan in some animal models, you do see epithelial cell damage. So you see epithelial cells, the cells that are in our gut, getting damaged, dying, and not proliferating, not replicating as much. So, okay, so we do see in other studies that carrageenan can have an effect directly on the cells within our gut, which could have a chain reaction of inflammation later on down the line. But again, it's highly species dependent. Primates, rodents, dogs, it changes entirely. So what about humans? Well, that's where it gets frustrating again because a lot of the human studies are limited to in vitro studies, which are done in a test tube. So the journal Nutrition found that exposing human uh, intestinal epithelial cells to carrageenan did increase the level of epithelial cell death and again, triggered less cell proliferation. This is not good, okay? Even though it's in vitro and we can't totally say it's apples to apples in the human body, this is not good to see. Okay, this does showcase that carrageenan is triggering the protective cells within our gut, the cells that do everything, to not be as effective and potentially die off and not replicate as well. Then another study took a look at isolated intestinal epithelial cells, and it found that there was an upregulation of nuclear factor kappa B, sort of the master inflammatory signal within the body, resulting in an upregulation of interleukin-8. So what this tells us is we do have localized inflammation, at least in these in vitro studies, which is indicative of the body kind of starting out a protective mechanism. Okay, so basically what's happening, if you think of it like this, you ingest carrageenan, or at least, again, test tube study, right? Carrageenan comes in, okay? The cells within the intestinal tract see it, and they trigger inflammation because for whatever reason, it's disturbing them. So they get inflamed as to protect the rest of the body from this thing potentially coming in. That shows us right there, there could be an issue. But there's one other study that demonstrates it a little bit clearer, and I think you can draw a conclusion from this pretty, uh, pretty distinctly. So this study was published in the Journal of Nutrition and Healthy Aging. Okay? Took a look at uh, patients that suffered from ulcerative colitis and had gone into somewhat of a remission. Now, ulcerative colitis is largely an inflammatory disease, so if you end up having a lot of inflammation, you can have uh, ulcers that come up in your intestinal tract. It's not good stuff. So what they did is they took these participants and they divided them into two groups, okay? Both groups, they said, do not consume carrageenan, so a no carrageenan diet. However, one group they gave a placebo tablet to, or capsule, and another group they gave a carrageenan capsule to. And they followed up with these patients every two weeks for either one year or until they relapsed. Here's what's interesting. Three of the patients that took the carrageenan supplement ended up relapsing. None of the patients that took the placebo relapsed. This doesn't really prove everything, but it does demonstrate some pretty clear stuff that shows that carrageenan might be inflammatory and trigger a relapse. They also took a look at their blood markers and they saw there was an increase in interleukin-6 which does show, okay, if interleukin-6 is elevated a little bit more in the group that had the carrageenan, then yeah, that's a pretty direct correlation, but it doesn't always equal causation. The point is here, carrageenan is rough because it's affecting our intestinal tract and triggering inflammation there, potentially. If we can trigger inflammation in our gut, then we open a door for lipopolysaccharides to get into the bloodstream, and that could potentially trigger systemic inflammation and chronic inflammation, which can be a much bigger issue overall. So can we connect the dots based on these in vitro studies and things like that? Yeah, we kind of can. Can we say definitively from a scientific perspective? No, we, we shouldn't because that's too concrete. The point is, is that we do need to be upset with carrageenan at the right level, not at the wrong level, blowing it out of proportion. It's polygenin that's bad. Carrageenan, if you have a little bit, I don't think it's going to totally hurt you but it's also not worth it because there's plenty of other things that companies can use to thicken a product without using carrageenan that does have some negative stigma and at least isn't in the dozer tracks of everything that's coming after it right now. Anyhow, I'll see you tomorrow.